So like all the meanings for the uh, under high pleasure, this is, uh, you know, no anti-trusting. Anti-trusting is, is fine on weekends with your friends, but don't do it here, okay? Um, so I, what, what I wanted to do, my goal here was to provide a form for the, the TSC to uh, talk to the, the product team who is developing the, uh, the LFX dashboard, which was released uh, last week. And I sent some links around for that uh, and to, to be able to provide feedback and, and requirements to Shubra and for Shubra to tell us about uh, the, the future direction. So Shubra, I, do you want me to hand the screen off to you or? How do yeah, you I, think it, uh, I think it might be helpful if I can give some high level context and uh, yeah, if you can, give, uh, I can share my screen. So I don't have a very great deck uh, created, but I'll walk you through what we built, right? So um, is everybody able to see my screen? Okay. I, I think you're good. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so what we've been working on, right? Like me and my engineering team has been working on creating this platform. This, uh, and it's a set of a tool chain that we are creating and providing to all Linux Foundation and Sister Foundation projects. And in those, there are different tools in the tool chain. Uh, Insights is the one that is more focused on, you know, analytics, uh, metric collection, project health. Uh, and again, I'll go deep into that. There are other tools in the tool chain are one focused around security, where we are scanning, you know, creating vulnerability detection reports, license compliance reports, and things like that. And again, creating a security bug backlog. Uh, there is an easy CLA bot, you know, if your project uses CLAs, that's that for, uh, you use that uh, tool for making developers' lives easier. Uh, if not, you know, we might be on a DCO. And then there are like, there's an individual dashboard, you know, which is kind of the community profile uh, for every individual in our uh, ecosystem. And then there are a variety of tools in that, like, you know, one for mentorship, one for crowdfunding, um, you know, uh, high pleasure projects and other projects are successfully already using these. So for insights in particular, I want to, uh, when we build this, I want to skip a few slides here and actually show you uh, what what we are doing with insights. So again, the, I think from a business problem standpoint, right, like uh, the different, you know, we interviewed a lot of projects and, you know, we got some uh, requirements in a way saying, hey, you know what, some of the requirements are like, you know, code velocity is slow. We don't really, we have a big community of contributors, but like, are there, you know, clogs in the development pipeline and we don't have an idea of where exactly, or like we are unable to identify the top contributors or from individuals, you know, to companies who are the influencers and it's not just code. Right, like it could be different areas of the project ecosystem, uh, or like maybe the user adoption is you know tapering off, or the project is plateauing. But is it the code quality, the lack of awareness? Um, so different problem areas that we were trying to solve. And then we, what we did is we started instrumenting uh, to get insights into you know, <laughs> it's cliche using the word insights again, to get you know um, data from these endpoints. Right. So we started with stuff like GitHub. We started with get it we looked at jenkins we looked at um, you know jira confluence uh, started looking at the social channels your earned media data uh, started instrumenting slack in hyperledger for example we found out you use rocket chat so we instrumented that we look at uh, uh, where are your email communications happening groups.io and whatnot so we started instrumenting those um, or maybe sometimes you're on google groups so as we started instrumenting those, uh, we found out like, you know, to be honest, like at the LF among the projects, there are like, you know, 30, 40, 50 different tools that every project uses. So we instrumented 15 so far, and we have relatively good metrics. Uh, everything from, you know, pull requests to builds to GitHub issues. If you're using GitHub, if you are in, no, or using Jira, then, you know, those would be Jira tickets. Your commit counts, the contributing companies, the contributing developers, lines of code that you're adding, deleting weekly, uh, which are the repos, you know, uh, how many downloads you're getting, how many people are sending chat messages, email messages, who are the top influencers in all those. And like what can, and those are metrics. And then based on those metrics, we started to build some analytics around it. So we are just early, and I'll show you what we have been building, but I really want to you know, brainstorm with this team, like what are the other relevant analytics you can get out of it? 
so based on these metrics that we are sitting on so anyway these are more like you know you can read about it but essentially the goal is to get like a full 360 degree view of your project not just github commits and um, the other area we are working on is like to build this contextual people view so you know if, if, if we are you know a lot of um, uh, uh, you know backlog is you know coming on to a few set of maintainers how do we you know identify that like how do we avoid maintainer uh, burnout what does that pipeline really look like right so anyway there are these are just of some of the features that are in the uh, in the tool um, you know we have affiliation management where you know if you're contributing code and you are contributing on behalf of yourself or you are contributing uh, on behalf of a company um, you know you can do that affiliation automatically earlier we were doing it manually uh, but like we looked at other projects like kernel um, or uh, kubernetes and a lot of them were using the git dm philosophy so what we did was we added that but we also added a ui where you know individual developers could go in and contributors could go in and uh, set their affiliation like you know this code is on behalf of myself or my employer or whatever right so and based on those we create a lot of leaderboards as well and then uh, you know uh, these are some of the sources i listed from a telemetry that we are gathering from multiple data sources and then we also try to slice these metrics into sort of technical metrics or technical trends and then ecosystem trends right uh, so that you start getting that you know 360 degree view so let me um, I'm not sure. Are you guys already using or uh, familiar with the dashboards in Insights? I've uh, been pushing that quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to say yes. But if you want to do like a. Yeah, let me just do a very quick, right? Like, so to get to it, all you need to do is go to insights.lfx.dev. And if you're in here, you can actually uh, look at this. This is going to load a lot of projects in there. But like if you start, yeah. So the way we have grouped them is like we have 73 groups of projects. And under each project, there could be one to n number of uh, you know projects under that project group. So CNCF will be one project group. Hyperledger would be one project group. So if, uh, if you can search for Hyperledger, um, you know, and if you go to the Hyperledger group, uh, you'll see uh, all your projects represented there. Now, this is based on the best of knowledge what projects exist under Hyperledger. If you are missing some, you need to let us know uh, so that we can turn on the instrumentation. Um, so we create like, you know, each project card has its own sets of metrics, but then we aggregate all of those metrics under a group summary. And in the group summary, this is like if you're looking at Hyperledger holistically. So you can see here there are like section of technical trends where we focus on you know source control your commits right as an example um, just keep in mind the first time these dashboards load it uh, there is a cache going on it's a little slow but then uh, you know uh, after that it kind of works lightning fast so here when you look at just commits um, you know you can filter by you know authors you can filter by company names you can filter by repositories you can filter by projects and uh, this is the affiliation I was talking about. Like you see, uh, you know, when it's like commits percentage by organization, you might have some buckets which are like unknown. What unknown really means that we don't really yet have the affiliation data for that. Like we found contributors, but we didn't know which company they were working for. Um, and then, uh, you know, you start seeing these time series plots of, you know, active contributors, uh, commits, commits by organization. So these are like stack ranked plots by each company uh, in your ecosystem. Lines of code changed, you know, who the key authors are, how many uh, recent, like what was the more recent changes come, uh, you know, and again, broken down by organizations as well. And which are the repos, which are the most active ones, uh, where, uh, which are the projects, which are the most active ones, just in terms of, you know, code uh, commit activity, right? And then, uh, Obviously, uh, from an organizational commit, there's a lot of data to read through here, but more, um, you know, 
just like we have commit data, we also get like if you're using Garrett or if you're using GitHub, we similarly, you know, use uh, look, look at all the PRs that are coming in, right? And once you get the PRs, uh, that's when you look at like, okay, some more metrics, like how are the PRs trending over time? How are the pull request status over time, right? How many are closed? How many are open? And again, broken down again by individuals, companies and whatnot. But the more interesting thing to look at is what is the efficiency? So this is where we are now trying to build towards, like what kind of metrics would be good uh, to track? Is just the lead time to close a PR important? Or, you know, like, uh, What's the back? You know, we have some backlog uh, BMI indexes. They we basically referred to a metric set that was developed at our Chaos project. This is like another Linux Foundation project, and Shubha. they had defined a lot of specifications. Shubha, yeah, I, I see that Dano has his hand up. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, I was just uh, had an idea for one of the metrics, so we can finish and wait for the open. So okay, okay. Great. So, you know, like in chaos, uh, they actually took a initiative and started defining these metrics, like, you know, in the focus areas, diversity areas, evolution areas, risk areas, and each of this has a metric definition. So, you know, like type of contributions, like activity dates, like, you know, uh, contributors, contributor location, right, organizational diversity. So we uh, basically based on what we are gathering, we are kind of following this spec till now. But um, it doesn't really focus on a lot on the analytics. So that's one area that we kind of, you know, are looking to get requirements. And then um, obviously, you know, we have similar breakdown in, you know, in Fujira and, uh, you know, your CI CD pipelines. Like if you're looking at your, you know, builds, how effective are those builds running? Like what's the build percentage? How many are passing? How many are failing? You can start looking into, you know, stuff like actual jobs, right? Uh, so like how many of them did get aborted, like how many of them are unstable. So you, maybe, you know, these are numbers, but might be good to plot these as, you know, uh, kind of derived metrics, like success rate of builds and things like that. And uh, similarly, we have, you know, like build duration, uh, you know, if you are able to say like, okay, this is the, you know, you draw a center uh, mean and saying like, you know, this is the ideal build duration. If you go spike beyond that, you should be alerting. Uh, saying like, hey, we had an anomaly here, right? Because these are like sheer metrics, if you, if you see what I mean, right? And uh, again, similarly, like, you know, uh, we have those container downloads, but then this is interesting one is around the ecosystem. So, you know, in your case, you are using chat as an example, rocket chat. So like, who are engaging? Who are the people who are kind of engaging, right? And what are they talking about? What's trending? So like, if you want to capture those keywords from an ecosystem perspective, uh, again, these are like inclusive or you can exclude, you know, these are like filler words. So these ones would be the ones I would exclude. Uh, but we have the configuration, like if you uh, give us the requirement, we can actually just exclude words not to look for, or actually if you want to look for certain words, you can, right? And then, you know, you look at like, who are those people who are the, uh, who are the most active on uh, Rocket Chat, which companies they work for. And then, you know, we have similarly like all your email um, conversations like you know if you think about stack overflow like your stack overflow is more or less <laughs> your email distribution list and these are like you know kind of the top topics these are the, your most active mailing lists these are actually recent messages that are happening on that uh, on those channels so we have all these data we are kind of sitting on a gold mine of data and i'll not go into every section you can check this out but uh, that was kind of a very high level overview, but I really wanted to come to this forum and uh, yeah. talk about like, I, we heard that you are starting an initiative around you know, defining some of those key metrics and analytics. So uh, we are looking to you know, consume those and maybe there's an overlap. If there is like net new, then we are looking to add those as well into the product because end of the day, uh, these are these tools we are building from LF for consumption for all our 500 plus projects. So let me stop my share there and uh, open it up. So one metric set that I'd be interested to see that I don't see on here for GitHub is if I'd like to know who's reviewing PRs, who's approving PRs, and who's actually doing the poll. Um, because on our repo, um, only the maintainers can initiate the poll and every single review must, every single PR must be reviewed by another maintainer. 
including the maintainer's own. So I'd be interested to see which maintainers are pulling more of the load in the reviews in the polls versus which ones aren't. And that's, you know, that's, that's, you know, more of a higher level, maybe towards the maintainer burnout type of thing. But if it's one person doing it all, that's something that should be um, surfaceable versus if it's shared, that's something that I would, you know, be interested to see. Got it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. Yeah, I noted that down. I'm kind of writing as we go. Uh, we were trying to like, yeah, I'll not <laughs> overcome it. Like we were uh, like for code on Garrett, we were looking at, you know, approval rates. There's a dashboard um, for approvers. Uh, basically, essentially, it's the reviewers, right, in, in terms of Garrett chain sets. But uh, for GitHub, we have to actually build that. So, uh, yeah, in Garrett we have approvals. In uh, Garrett we don't. So that's that's so definitely something we will add. Part. Yeah, because knowing how long it takes like to get stuff reviewed and approved. Yeah, I think Arun was first. Oh, sorry, Arun. Hey, um, I, I'd like to add on to that point. I'm, I also pointed this out in the document on on the uh, badging proposal. So it would help us if you know uh, which organization. Uh, so at, at least, if not the individual level data, but if we can know. At, at, I mean, for maintainers, which organization is getting involved in the project? To what percentage are they getting involved? Yeah, and I also I, I want to point out that we do have Dano put up a proposal here, Shubra, and there is a lot of commentary at the bottom mm -hmm. um, about how do we understand project health. Um, and I know that you you rolled out project health uh, the other day. Yes, yes. Actually, uh, if you uh, unshare, I think that's something important I could probably show. Uh, give me one second. Um, yeah, just uh, give me a URL. If... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, even if you just go to uh, insights.lfx.dev. And you see that button there, which says compare project health and uh, go ahead and add a few projects. A-R-I-E-S, it is, yep. Uh, what would be another one? Also, uh, yeah, you can add more. Um, and again, like, uh, yeah, if you're looking at 12 months. So here's uh, one set of like, when we build this original comparison chart, we got a, uh, like the metrics that you're seeing, uh, that set of requirements was uh, given by CNCF, uh, particularly for the Kubernetes project. But I think we, we don't want to have like one size fits all. So what we are looking is like, you know, if, uh, if that confluence page that you have um, has, you know, these kind of key metrics that you want to look side by side in terms of trends, uh, you know, we'll definitely uh, add them in. And like maybe like if there is one specific one for hyperledger projects that you really care about. Okay, um, heart or uh, heart, yeah. Hey, thanks. So I already have found these tools really useful, um, particularly for showing people um, who aren't as familiar with the projects sort of what's going on. But one thing I think that would be really useful. Um, at least for companies, is if we had something that I'm going to call uh, upper management mode. Mm -hmm. um, so if there were like, so, so ideally for me, there would be sort of a portal that um, that showed all of our contributions across all projects in Hyperledger. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what, what I want to use this data for is to like, sort of say like, look, you know, you want to do X, you know, if you want to do X, we need more resources, you know, stuff like that. Um, so if I can use this kind of data to pitch to like people that, that, you know, we need more resources on this project or, or something like that, um, that, that would be really fantastic, uh, from my perspective. Got it. Got it. So a couple of things so that I understand it correctly. Uh, right. Could you, uh, pull up like it just on the normal projects, not on the comparison ones. Like if you can pull up Hyperledger, um, like any, any project, uh, doesn't matter Aries or. Yeah. Maybe. Yep. There we go. Okay. So if you look at the source control as an example, mm -hmm. um, 
or even here, right? Like you're seeing the top 10 companies, but then if you look at that source control, once this thing loads for you, uh, we have a filter today, which is a company view. So if you look at like, uh, let's look at uh, on that list that you have commits by, yeah, you could do it there or you could do it just on the graph also uh, and just hit apply changes. So this is a limited view for every company uh in the you know in the areas they are contributing now but again this is like per project even if you do it per high, uh, at a higher level by hyperledger in the project group summary uh that gives you that view but um, yeah if you keep, click on the project group summary tab uh, next to all hyperledger projects and you filter uh, i think if you go to the same view and uh, yeah you can just save you all <clears throat> Yeah, and then you can apply the filter. You can even do the filtering from uh, the drop down, the commits percentage by organization. If you click IBM, uh, or like, yeah, you can just search. <clears throat> that either works. Yeah, and just apply. So this is kind of, uh, see, if you look at Accenture and if you scroll down, these are basically, again, based on the time range. So this is just last 90 days. If you, yeah, if you go and add and click apply for the last year. Um, and if you scroll down all the way, uh, yeah, these are essentially the people who have been contributing from Accenture, at least based on the affiliation that we have. And these are the repositories and these are the projects where Accenture has been contributing, right, across just for Hyperledger. Now, um, we have this, but again, it's kind of like you have to do the filtering. But I think what, if I'm understanding your requirement correctly, uh, let's say, you know, you were company Acme and you're logging in, you want to look at like globally all across LF uh, and like could be like any project, any project group, any area. Is that kind of like the kind of the view at the company level? Yeah, that would be one uh, one particular thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we have, we are building something in the pipeline. I don't want to. <laughs> okay. If you uh, can unshare, sorry. Uh, well, this is, so keep, keep in mind okay. that this is a, a public meeting and the recording will be shared. So. Okay. Okay. No, that's, that's fine. Uh, my main thing is like, there's something we are building in uh, that's kind of in our roadmap. I don't think that uh, is like secret anymore. <laughs> you know, we have already put it on our website, but let me show you like, um, uh just a snapshot it's like in design mode but we are calling this as the organization dashboard so this will be built like you know uh, next year but um if you look at this like based on a company logging in we actually are plotting you know your memberships we are looking at all the kind of metrics for for every project so we have something in the works but like i think it's like super early for us in that but uh Absolutely, we got the requirement. So, you know, uh, we'll, when we are kind of a little bit more mature on the company specific view, we'd definitely like to come back and present. Awesome, okay. thank you very much. Arun? Oh, um, my other question was, I think it was just um, related to the presentation. And in one of the, uh, I mean, one of the screen, you told that anomaly detection is possible. So. I would like to know how can we make that as an actionable item? If we have an anomaly, how can, is there a possibility of alerting through it? Yes, so we don't have alerting today, but that's what we have started working on. So generally like uh, most, today what we have is just a graphical indicator of there's like a pattern, right? It's in the red or whatever, but that's not enough. There's no event triggered based on that. So, and then uh, based on what chaos, uh, like if you look at some of those efficiency charts, right? If you mm -hmm. scroll up and just click on efficiency uh, on the GitHub PR efficiency as an example. Yeah, the third in that, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so if you look at this, you see the time to merge. This is kind of a threshold that they defined zero to seven days. Um, you know, let me see if I can just annotate this a little bit. Yeah, the, the, exactly that section. So these, like the chaos group, they defined what what a good range uh, of how many days should be considered a healthy period or, a, you know, <laughs> a warning or a danger, right? And um, we, we use those metric specifications. But again, these are like... Uh, 
think about it, these are hard-coded or like this can differ from project to project. Now for an extremely busy project, um, versus a project who does releases like every three months, these numbers could be like quite off. You see what I mean? Like, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, for an extremely busy project where there are like hundreds of pull requests coming in every day, if you wait for like seven days, uh, that means there is an issue. <laughs> it's not healthy. Uh, like maybe there's like, you know, too few maintainers or like the PRs are not getting reviewed in time and you have like thousands of PRs backed up. But for a project which kind of, you know, makes releases like every quarter, and like, you know, PRs come in a bunch, or maybe they're like, you know, 200,000 line commits, which again, you can debate, like, is it a healthy practice or not? Like generally we would like smaller iterative commits versus like big bang, you know, 500,000 lines code commit. But um, those numbers could vary. So what we are trying to do is instead of those hard, we could work with those hard thresholds. That's not an issue. If you tell us like, okay, these are, uh, good thresholds to monitor off, we can set those indexes. But what we really want to do is like turn on, uh, we are looking at some machine learning algos in the terms of like just normalizing the data, right? Like what happens on our day to day and every project can have different cyclic activities. And uh, based on like, you know, what's a predictive cycle for like, you know, you have your ups and downs and seasonal changes. It takes some time to normalize the data. But like uh, our point is like if the data is out of that normal operating band, then you know we create an anomaly, and then anomaly will kind of trigger an alert, and that alert will be you know if you want that alert to go to a, a TSC uh, email group or a TOC one or uh, maybe even to the individual developer, we could trigger that. So that's what we have started working on, but uh, so far nobody has you know either way say like okay. Should we start with hard alerts, right? Like hard thresholds, or should we really, you know, just look at like how is the project doing over time? Well, and then like, yeah, I, I think that kind of gets to the the core of what I wanted to, or I hope to cover. And I see Arno has his hand up, so I, Arno. Yes, hi guys. I wanted to follow up on uh, Daniel's point on the 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 reviews. I think that's in general something that is not being rewarded enough. Uh, for one thing, I, you know, I've been trying to get maintainers in my project fabric to take to take it very seriously, and I expect maintainers to almost do more reviews than commits. And I think it's kind of a flaw of the current system that you know PR reviews and merges are not rewarded. I think, if I remember correctly, you said, for instance, right, that in the uh, for the TSC election people who just do a merge are not even counted as contributors, which to me is completely wrong. Mm. So I'm all for trying to exhibit more the contribution that is being made through PR reviews. PR reviews, got okay. it. Um, so as, <clears throat> on a, sorry, I have a frog in my throat. Um, so at a, at a higher level, I, I guess what I wanna do, I wanna ask Arno and, and the TSC members, uh, where do you want to go? Because there was, there was a ton of stuff here in the project badging proposal. Um, th this meeting is, is, you know, an introduction for the TSC to product team so that I'm not the unre unreliable narrator feeding requirements back and forth. Um, how do you want to work together? How can you work together? And like, where do you want this? Where do you want this to go? Yeah, for us, like, yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Okay, uh, David Boswell. Hey, thanks. Sorry about that. Zoom's not letting me raise my hand because I'm sort of the co-host. Would you be able to pull up the community health dashboard uh, again? Just had a, a, an observation to share about that. And it builds on what Shubra said earlier. I mean, there really is a gold mine of data here. And I think that's amazing. And all of these data points and metrics are useful, but as far as community health goes, I just wanted to point out that many things that we can measure don't actually tell us anything about health. And so I would wanna just talk through maybe another way to get a, a view into the data. So for example, the number of commits or the number of contributors, you can think of many scenarios where when those numbers go up, it's actually a sign that the community is not healthy. You could see, for example, one scenario, you could imagine that you have a, a really stable community with a bunch of contributors who 
make you know a number of commits over time and then it becomes toxic and then all of a sudden the community starts churning through people you know people show up have a negative experience and leave in that scenario the number of contributors might apparently be going up but that's certainly not a sign of community health in that situation and again you can come up with a bunch of scenarios where the same sort of thing happens for a number of commits num you know number of lines of code what whatever I mean, I think a, a better way to approach the community health is to look at things that map back to different attributes and different values of a healthy community. So for example, instead of knowing the number of total contributors, I'd rather know the retention rate of those contributors, right? Are, mm -hmm. Do we have a community where people show up, have a good experience and stay involved? Or do we have a community where people come, have a bad experience and leave? So in that point, it wouldn't, I wouldn't care about the absolute number of contributors, but I would care about the value of having a community where people want to stay involved. So a reten retention rate would seem more important. You know, I can think of other values of what a healthy community would be, would be, for example, it's welcoming, you know, and I can think of a metric that mapped to that. For example, what is the average review time when somebody shows up and they make an offer to contribute? Are they getting a timely response? So I would prefer to have a dashboard that mapped, you know, five or six or seven metrics that map back to values that we say are part of a healthy community. I can think of another one, you know, it's, I think it's, you know, we, we, that would be an interesting mapping exercise. You know, I think we say, for example, we're a global community, you know, do we see contributors contributing, you know, really from a global perspective or are there barriers, for example, around time zones that make it hard for somebody, for example, in India to, to commit, you know, you know, if a community is so locked into meetings, you know, that could be very exclusionary to people who don't, you know, have time zones that map to those meetings. So just to throw that out there, I think that would be a much more useful lens at a community health dashboard instead of, again, a bunch of absolute numbers that don't necessarily map back to or are hard to distinguish are these, you know, showing me uh, something that you know, is an indicator of health or not? Like, could we have a dashboard that had, you know, a retention metric, a welcoming metrics, for example, uh, um, that did reflect those values of a healthy community? Okay, Arun? Hey, um, so, yeah, I was about to add on to that and probably like a request for if there is an option. So this data, as which, which I see currently on the screen is too much and uh, to consume, right? And yeah. for example, many of this may not be relevant. If just because number of commits has gone down in last one year, that may not mean that project is not healthy. So um, is there an option where we could build a dashboard and I can choose metrics which I am interested in, in mm -hmm. tracking across all the projects. And um, that way I can also save that dashboard somewhere and say, mm -hmm. hey, here is the metric which I would like to go over probably once a week or probably mm -hmm. twice a week. And, and at some regular interval and notice the changes at a dashboard level and if so, required i'll drill down to each of it so uh, i i want to slightly expand on that arun um so i don't know if you saw the bit about the tsc having quarterly reports for uh our, the projects um but it's it's basically what that would be uh arun's requirement there would i think capture a lot of the work that goes into that a lot of the reporting um, so if you wanted to take a look at our TSC quarterly reports, uh, that would, it would be uh, to have a time, a three month chunk for the last year for Project Bezu, where you could see a graph of the health metrics would be, uh, would be very nice. Anyway, I see Arno has his hand up. Yeah, I wanted to follow up on David's point. I think he, he raises some very interesting uh, uh, point, but I, you know, to me, it highlights the danger of overinterpreting the the meaning of those numbers because, you know, the fact that somebody came, made one contribution, and then kind of disappeared does not necessarily mean they had a bad experience, right? They can, they may not be a regular contributor. They use a tool, you know, uh, and and they are generally satisfied they just you know keep using it and then they find a bug and they say oh i'm going to fix this and they come and contribute the fix to that one bug and then they just go away and it has nothing to do with the fact that they had a bad experience so i think you know 
we have to be very careful. And if anything, to me, it, it, it kind of makes me feel we should have a big disclaimer of all, all those dashboards and, and analytic tools about the, the potential flaw in interpreting you know, the numbers and the graphics you get from this. I think you're absolutely back to Shubra's point about the gold mine. I think we've gone from feast to fam, or what's the expression, famine to feast or whatever. Like we had a situation where there weren't enough metrics. Now we almost have too many, right? Like I think the challenge with these sorts of dashboards is you have so many data points and it's so easy to draw wrong conclusions. You see a chart that's going up, you think that's great. For example, like I think that's my main takeaway, I think, from this conversation around a community health dashboard. I mean, this community health dashboard, as I see it right now, has all sorts of data points in it. I mean, whatever the number is, I know it scrolls down even further, like 20 plus different data points. And I think it's very unclear what to infer from these data points. So, you know, I think that's that's something for us to look at. Like we, we want to make sure that any data point on here actually does map back to some sort of value that does actually indicate that there's, you know, a community health yeah. uh, no, no, item absolutely. happening. Yeah, and absolutely. And that's why I said, right, like these, uh, the one that you, this implementation that you see is basically like a CNCF SIG uh, uh, group, uh, basically like wrote up their specs on what these metrics mean. But again, that's like CNCF's interpretation, right? It may not necessarily be Hyperledger's interpretation yeah. based on what how your community functions. And that's a good point. I mean, all communities are different, but I, and maybe this is what Arun was saying, but I would see my vision would be like a much tighter, maybe, you know, just I, th I think, I think as I said, maybe even just five or six things that are, you know, very clearly correlated that we right. can make some infer inferences from. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I think there was one I uh, wanted to uh, touch upon. Like, Rai, are you able to go back to one of the dashboards where we have those active uh, contributor boards, like any project? Uh, sure. not, the health, not the health one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you look at the community leaderboard tab on the right, top right, yeah. So this one... Um, Again, as we talk with different communities, we get this kind of requ unique requirements. But I think this is uh, this this dashboard was used by the networking and edge projects for their voting. But uh, if you look at it, like this is mostly the more active people, right? Like this is not like all time contributors, who are the basically the time range is like last ninety days. And uh, but again, these are again set of metrics, but. Uh, if you start looking into like code or like you know uh, they they included like documentation as part of the voting uh, metrics that they want to look at because not everybody is writing code there could be people who are filing issues there are people who are just you know reviewing looking at pull requests or uh, people who are just writing docs so again that's kind of like what the voting criteria is so this is another area, like in addition to like that top level project health, where, you know, obviously uh, when we say active, the whole idea was like, what's the retention rate? What's the drop off, right? That's like, does it indicate health or not? But um, another area I want to do, have you think around is like, what would be like, you would definitely use have voting, right? Like what are the kind of key things you want to look at for voting, for example? Uh, that would be another set that would be very useful for us. Okay, I'm not sure who had their hand up next, so I'm going to go with Tracy because she's spoken the least on the meeting. Thanks, Ray. Uh, so I wanted to go back to the the health dashboard. Um, I think, you know, Rai, you mentioned kind of the, the quarterly reports that we do within Hyperledger, and I think if we look at the the health dashboard, right, it is uh, comparing projects to other projects. I'd like to see us being able to compare the same project across different time frames. Um, so, you know, Basu in the last quarter, in the quarter before that, the quarter before that sort of thing, right? To see trends uh, and what sort of directions that uh, a project is heading in. I, I think, you know, for, for figuring out whether something is healthy or not, I think some of the trends might help us in determining you know, what's going on specifically with inside that project. Got it. So generally, do you guys look into uh, quarter over quarter or you also look into like, you know, year over year? Like what's the general practice? 
I'm going to say that the TOC has primarily been interested in quarter over quarter um, because there is a requirement that uh, projects do quarterly reports. Um, but uh, I don't know if year over year is also interesting. Um, Hart, you have the floor? Yeah, so I wanted to push back a little against uh, David's point that he only wanted to see a few metrics. You know, I'd like to sort of be able to see as, as many metrics as possible. And if we can have some, you know, sort of, of condensation of the metrics, you know, that might be nice too. But from my perspective, just sort of knowledge is power and, and the more I can see the better. And the examples that people have given of metrics uh, being misleading are, are sort of really indicative of mixed state of projects, right? So I believe people have been talking about, you know, it's not healthy um, if, you know, there's a lot of contributor churn, right? If 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 people are, are adding contributors, but, you know, uh, old contributors are leaving as well. And while I agree that it's not healthy, right? It's it's not, uh, the, the project is still doing something right to to get more contributors. It's, it's not as if just people are leaving and, you know, and, and totally just not being replaced. Um, so, so this is like, you know, this, this would be sort of indicative of, of the project is doing something right, but it's also doing something very wrong to me. Um, so, so the fact that these statistics are sort of conflicting and some are saying the health is good and some are saying the health is bad uh, might also be a useful tool. Um, okay, Daniel? Sorry, I'm also slacking at the same time. Um, one of the, probably this is, goes back a couple of maybe is a little tangent off of the current topic, but when I was looking at the list of, you know, number of PRs and number of lines committed that we are comparing there, um, we have some within base suit people with very drastically different workflows. We have some contributors that love to do the big bang and other contributors love to dribble it in across a whole week and whatever they commit during the day. Um, and similarly, we have some commits that are very deep and important that are very few lines and some that have some very, very verbose test cases. Um, and those really jump up the numbers. So when we look at some of those numbers, I mean, we do need to take with a grain of salt that those might not reflect, um, you know, the value of the, of the contribution because the metrics are measuring things that are secondary that aren't the purpose. You know, there's like that legendary go fix that they just had a few weeks ago for the security that was literally an off by one error. And it took like weeks to figure out and test to make sure that it wasn't going to have negative impacts elsewhere. You know, that would get buried under some of these, you know, we changed, we added a contract to, uh, to the Genesis block and now we got to change 65 files. So. So uh, we're down to the last uh, 10 minutes. Um, what I would like to come away from the meeting with is like a path forward for the TSC to work more directly with the, the product team. So, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Shuba or Vasu, like, how can we facilitate getting these requirements so that this is a much shorter loop? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. So uh, usually we have a, you know, a support channel, but in this case, uh, that's not support. We want to do more collaboration here. So um, you're all, if, is it possible for us to, like, if, if you, like, what, what would be useful is if your team can collaborate or like Hyperledger TOC members, as well as other people in the community, if you can collaborate on that requirements doc that you are writing on Confluence, and if we can, uh, uh, you know, have access to that Confluence page, uh, particularly like uh, Sachin, who is the product manager, couldn't make it. That's why like Vasu is running engineering uh, on my team has it. But if we can get that link, maybe we can use this as the, you know, I, again, it's not specific just for Besu. If we can convert this at a, uh, like a doc for the overall, you know, Hyperledger. Um, I think this would be one area we would like to come in, comment, and, you know, also get requirements from. And then um, uh, usually what would be happen is as we are releasing some net new things, we'll like to, you know, have some feedback as we are closing in on the product. But uh, would it be possible for me or, uh, or Sachin Vasu, one of them, to 
have a regular cadence where you know we can join maybe it doesn't need to be like hijacking the tse calls but if you can join like a you know the only the folks who are really interested uh, maybe it's a sig or whatever um you know to discuss like the updates like it could be once a month could be once every two weeks um outside of you know just the document so that's an interesting uh question because i know that uh i i know that this has come up multiple times about having a task force on community health. Um, that would be something that I know the TSC uh, has the ability to do. And I don't remember who the last uh, champion for that was. Uh, so, Dan, you have your hand up. Oh, okay. Um, Arun. Hey, um, I was. So I will leave this question to um, everyone to answer collaboratively. But I agree that, um, I mean, we can, in fact, invite. If not TSC, we could have a separate uh, SIG created, but I'll leave it up to the TSC meeting where we collaborate and then discuss on what to proceed with. I would like to bring out two other points quickly and understand if that is a possibility through this tool. Um, the other requirement, if it would, be, it would be helpful, is just a, just a project dependencies, right? To understand how, so, um, but I, I'm not sure about other projects under Linux Foundation, but within Hyperledger, we may end up in a scenario where we have few of the projects which are called as library projects. Some of them could be used by other for end case, I mean, end application development. Some of them could be used for some, uh, let's say, um, coming up with new DLT or uh, doing some enhancements, right? So if that can be captured as well as one of the metric, for example, you may need to go and pull in along with Docker Hub, but just go and pull in from let's say the uh, the cargo repository uh, the count of dependencies from there so that would be one ask and the other ask is i know dano you answered this question on the uh, confluence page regarding the release version association with the badges but i would like to put that question a little differently here so um so with the releases right it's it i know um, within hyperledger there is freedom for each project to have define their own release metrics and um, do the dot releases and but the what lacks is we really don't know how often that release is going in um, or what chunk of things are going in for that release like when we want to understand what's happening in the project we are not even sure if it's just a um, bug fix which was done in last i mean up after the last release before this next release which is going in or is it that projects are really taking that release thing seriously? Um, mm -hmm. Got I, it. I, I'm not sure if I put that. No, no, I, I, I think I, yeah, I think I'm getting that. Like, uh, Rai, is it possible for you to just uh, unshare? I wanted to show something to Arun and the group. Um, so we have, uh, I'm, again, I'm taking notes as well as we speak. So. We have this, uh, you know, under, under the LFX toolkit, we have this security service where there are additional analytics. But if I look at, uh, let me show you maybe just to validate your use case, right? Uh, if I go to security and if I look at, uh, let's say, like I look at Jenkins uh, as an example. <clears throat> so when you talk about uh, dependencies, so you can see here, like, you know, this is the Jenkins project, but if you look at the dependency, uh, again, this is more of a vulnerability view as well as all dependencies. It's essentially the app application map of all the upstream that you are using. So is this what you're referring to in terms of like the upstream, like forget about the vulnerability part, but is this what you're referring into like all the upstream packages that that project is using? Not quite right this way, but who else is using if for example, I if I were uh, I, if I were the owner of the Java X XML stream, mm -hmm. so I want to know like who others are using this. I see, got it, got it. Across across different projects, at least like the ones we can monitor, right? That's right. Yep. Okay, I got it. Okay, and another thing um, in terms of releases, so we have this kind of uh, again, this is on the security side. We can pull this into insights. That's not a problem. But you know where we have this language breakdown and we have these releases. But the point is that when we started looking at the releases, uh, we were looking at every repo 
within which makeups that makes up that project jenkins is insane it has like 1800 repos but like we look at the main repos but then you know all those repos have like specific branch releases um, so are you looking at like when you talk about releases are you looking at like the project as a whole uh, but again that does make like you know again it depends on the project's practice right like do they that the project does a releases as a holistic one or do like every repo within that or a group of repos cut their own releases so would you like to see that like at repo level or at like the entire project level you see what i mean yeah, I understand your question. I may need some time to go over it and to understand okay. because the reports which are which we receive is at the project level. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if I maybe trick. if if yeah, I might, um, I would propose that the the TSC uh, you know form a task force for stats stuff and uh, for community health and and you know have a more formal way to like feed these requirements in. Um, yeah. This isn't actually a TSC meeting, even though I think all of you are here. Uh, so, Arno? Yeah, <clears throat> no, but absolutely, I agree with you. I was going to follow up on that. I do think, you know, taking this to the whole TSC, even every other week or so would be a bit much. But uh, I think having a task force where people can, you know, interested, can engage, uh, uh, you know, more regularly and then, when there is an actual like achieved, you know, milestone, we can bring it back to the TSC for the whole TSC to look at. Mm -hmm. I think is a better approach. So I'm all for that approach. So perhaps that would be the first piece of business next year, like, or you could like do that on the mailing list or however you want to handle that. I don't think, I don't think it's a piece of business that needs to be handled in the next uh, 90 seconds is what I'm getting at. No, I agree. Closing thoughts? Yeah, so I think we have, uh, I've gathered a bunch of requirements today. And I think on that Confluence page, uh, Rai, if we can get the link to that, like I'll have my engineers uh, use that as the reference point. But if, uh, you know, uh, the projects can actually put the requirements there in as much possible detail, uh, that would be great for us. Like we'll start treating that Confluence page as the requirements and, you know, go from there. Yeah, and if you want to um, right, set up a dedicated Slack channel from Hyperledger and invite some of us from uh, product engineering, uh, we can also be part of it. Okay, I'll uh, collaborate through that, right? Uh, you mean like on the LF Slack? Yeah, either you know we can um, establish a channel on the LF side or on the Hyperledger and you can invite us uh, into that. Gotcha. I, I don't want to prescribe a solution in the next you know, couple of seconds, but just, a, just yeah. a thought. Yeah. 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 Anyone else? Well, uh, I apologize for the, uh, the interruption there in the, in the middle and, uh, I will get these, uh, recordings posted to the, uh, TSC space as soon as they're, uh, as soon as they're done converting, um, Shubra. Yeah, no, I think this is great. Um, thank you. Thank you for your time and your feedback. Really looking to collaborate. Well, likewise. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks all. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye.